Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for November 7, 2014. Not only are we going to close out the week strong, but I really believe that this message is going to bless lots of people. It already blessed me. The message this morning is entitled, Believe the Love. The Lord wants us to believe his love, to trust in his love, to know that he loves us with an everlasting love. This message is part of a series entitled Grace-Based Success, where we're learning how to win in life and how to do it God's way by his unearned and amazing grace. If you really want to win in life, you got to do it by God's grace, and you will only really embrace his grace towards you when you know he loves you. When you're, when you're no longer struggling over the fact that he loves you in spite of everything that you've done, he loves you with an everlasting love. So we've been studying the life of Joseph, and today we're going to pick up the story in Genesis chapter 43, and I'm going to cover verses 15 through 30. So by then, uh, here in the story, uh, Jacob sent his boys back. He finally gave up and he said, okay, take Benjamin, take the gifts, take the money, take double money and go back and get some food and bring back your brother Simeon. They're heading back to Egypt. And as they go back, Joseph was waiting for them. So when they get to Egypt, um, uh, immediately they were brought before Joseph, the Sultan, the prime minister of Egypt. Uh, when Joseph saw them, the first thing he noticed was Benjamin. See, he loved Benjamin. He and Benjamin had the same mom and he looked at Benjamin. He hadn't seen Benjamin in 22 years by this point. And it was just a special moment. Of course, Benjamin didn't know and the other brothers didn't know, but he was looking at him and, and he, he just, the Bible says that he noticed Benjamin. He maintained his composure and then he directed his, his men to take the brothers to his personal home. Basically, he was a prime minister, so I'm sure his home was like a palace. So, so he, he directed his men to take these men to his personal home, to his palace, and to have a meal prepared for them. While this was going on, remember that Simeon was still a hostage, and I'll deal with that in a minute. But the brothers were confused because they, they were like, why are we being treated so well? They came there ready, you know, to offer up these gifts. Um, and this is where I'm led to point out, you know, one of the many, many, many similarities between Joseph and Jesus. The brothers came to Joseph with guilt and shame, but Joseph received them as forgiven family members. Instead of condemning them for what they had done, he ordered a meal to be prepared for them. And you and I, as born-again believers, we too will have a meal with Jesus someday. It's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. Read Revelations 19 and 9. So the brothers were taken to Joseph's palace. They were still somewhat anxious. They didn't understand why they were being, you know, they were getting this royal treatment. They thought it was actually a trap. And so they were, they were apprehensive. And when, um, uh, while they were waiting on Joseph, they took the opportunity to explain to Joseph Stewart. They said, listen, hey, we don't know what happened. Uh, uh, maybe there was a mistake. When we left last time, uh, the money that we gave you guys was still in our bag. We didn't take the money. Somehow it showed up in there. And the steward was like, listen. Listen to what the steward said. Remember, this is an Egyptian man, he, but he's been serving a Hebrew man. He's been serving uh, 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 somebody who's serving our God. And this is what the, the Egyptian steward said. Everything's in order. Don't worry. Your God and the God of your father must have put the money there because I was paid in full. Look at God. He was saying, listen, I, I received the money. Everything was done. I was paid in full. I don't know where that other money came from. Maybe it just came from your God. Now they were really confused. They were like, man, what is going on now? The brothers, were they didn't know what was going on. They thought they were being punished for what they had done to Joseph 20 years earlier. By this point, 22 years earlier. But things kept working out for their good. And then to make a good situation even better, Simeon shows up. And so now Simeon is freed. All 11 brothers were made comfortable. Their donkeys were tended to. And, uh, and, and, and the brothers were waiting on Joseph. So they said, well, listen. When the man comes in, let's be ready. And so they spread out all their gifts and they were prepared to pay the Egyptian prime minister for what they had done. And when Joseph showed up, they presented their gifts and they bowed down respectfully before him. But Joseph welcomed them. He ignored their gifts and he simply asked about their father. And then as Joseph uh, looked around the room, he realized that finally all 12 brothers had been reunited. You know the song, Reunited and Feels So Good. So he had been reunited with his 12 brothers after 22 years, and when he looked at Benjamin, finally, I mean, the, the love in his heart boiled over. He had to break out the room. He, he immediately left the room. He went into his private chamber 
Uh, and then the Bible says that he cried deeply and uncontrollably. He was not crying because he was upset. He was crying because he loved them so much. And now, what does this mean to you? Today on this Friday morning, man, I'm telling you that, that that's the way that God deals with us. I have two things to share with you. Number one, we sometimes come to God like Joseph's brothers came to him. The brothers did not know what was going on. They came as guilty men. They knew they were guilty before God for what they had done to Joseph as a boy. And they thought they would be accused of being guilty before the prime minister for leaving without paying for the food on the first trip. So they laid out their money. They bowed down before the Egyptian prime minister in an attempt to receive mercy. But they never knew that the man that they were bowing down to actually loved them and had already forgiven them. He loved them so much that he burst into tears. This is how it is when you and I come to God. We come guilty. We, we, and our guilt makes us want to pay for our sin. And, and we do things. We like, I'll do this and I'll do that. And we want to do things to make up for what we've done. But there's nothing we could do to pay for our sin because Jesus already paid the price. Jesus paid it all. And so we come and we bow before God as a guilty foreigner, but he receives us in love and Jesus receives us as a brother. We come as a stranger. He receives us as a brother because we have the same father. So just like Joseph in this story received his brothers, our eldest brother Jesus receives us when we come to him because he loves us. We're guilty, but he loves us. We've done wrong, but he loves us. We know we're, we know we're guilty, but we're forgiven. Number two, God receives us like Joseph received his brothers, his brothers, with a humanly unbelievable love. I mean, humanly speaking, this love that Joseph exhibited towards his brothers, people that had done him wrong, was humanly unbelievable. It always, it, uh, it's always all right. Let me say this. It's always all right to repent uh, and come before God and come as a broken vessel, come as a humble vessel, but you must also believe that he will accept you forgive you and invite you to sup with him, invite you to enjoy some time with him. See, God blesses you simply because he loves you. Once you truly believe his love, you will be changed forever. The apostle John in the New Testament said in 1 John 4 and 16, so we know the love that God has for us and we trust that love. That's from the ERV, but the King James says that we believe the love. See, my question for you is, do you? Do you really? Do you trust God's love? Do you believe he loves you with an everlasting love? Do you believe that you did nothing to get God to start loving you and you can do nothing to make him stop? If you believe and you trust God's love, it will change the way you see God. It will change the way you see yourself. It will change the way you treat others and it will change your approach to life. The love of God is amazing. The message today is believe the love. Let's, let's close out uh, today and enter into today and this weekend uh, with, uh, with a declaration of faith. Speak this over your life and believe the love. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your amazing grace and also my requirement to live by faith. Thank you for loving me with an everlasting love. Your tireless pursuit of me is amazing to me. You loved me before I was born. You loved me while I was living contrary to your word. You loved me while I was living in the world. You sent people to me over and over again to share your love with me even when I openly rejected you time and time again. You never gave up on me, and I now know that you never will. I come to you broken, with my head down, knowing I'm guilty, and you freely receive me as your forgiven son. You choose to bless me richly by your unearned grace, and I simply access your grace with my faith. But even when my faith falters, or even when it fails, your grace never fails because you love me with an everlasting 
and unwavering love. The more I study your grace and the more I understand your love, the more it changes my opinion of you. There was a time when I was afraid of you, Father. When I did wrong, I thought you were out to get me. But I now realize how foolish I was. If you wanted to get me, I would have been destroyed a long time ago. You chased me down, but not to hurt me. You chased me down to bless me because you love me. So, Father, I know I'm supposed to live by faith, and I declare that I will. I live my life by faith, and my faith is rooted and grounded in your love. My faith is strong because I know you love me. My confidence is, is fearless and it's unwavering because I'm convinced that you love me. My outlook is bright and the expectation I have for my future is extremely high because I know you love me and I know you will bless me by your undeserved grace. All I can do is believe your love, receive your love, accept your love and accept your blessing. You bless me by grace. I access it by faith. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Sign up so you can get the messages. Let me tell you this. As you go into the today and this weekend, God loves you. Believe the love and be blessed. God bless you.